while the kingdom was the book of Acts chapters 5 to 8. Chapter 5, Kingdom Justice. Acts 5 verses 1 to 4, But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession, and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part, and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost, and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whiles it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. His wife also being privy to it, she had inside information concerning the price of the land. According to Peter's own words that when Ananias lied to the apostles about how much he had sold his land for he was lying to the Holy Ghost as well. Even more interesting is that by lying to the Holy Ghost Ananias was at the same time lying to God because they are one. Peter knew that Ananias and Sapphira were lying because he was filled with the Holy Ghost and he also gave Peter their sentence and the power to bring that to pass. If the numerous gifts that were in operation on Pentecost and soon after are still around today, then why isn't anyone exercising the gifts on display here? These gifts are not for us today. Acts 5 verse 5 And Ananias hearing these words fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all them that heard these things. Gave up the ghost, his spirit departed from him, and he died. Verse 10 below and Genesis 25 verse 8. Acts 5 verses 7 to 9 And it was about the space of three hours after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, Yeah, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Deuteronomy 6 verse 16 Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God, as ye tempted him in Massa. To tempt the Spirit of the Lord, Notice the word spirit is capitalized. This denotes the deity of the spirit. Can the spirit of the Lord be tempted? No. James 1 verse 13 Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. Acts 5 verses 10 to 11 Then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead, and, carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church, and upon as many as heard these things. Yielded up the ghost, this is kingdom justice, which will be the law of the land during the kingdom. No one will commit any crimes during those days and get away with it. This church in Jerusalem was made up solely of Jews. They were waiting for the kingdom and trusting in the gospel of the kingdom. Acts 5 verses 12 to 16 And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest durst no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets, and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. By the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were wrought among the people. Why were the apostles able to heal people like Jesus did? Because the offer of a kingdom was still in play at this time, and no one could be priests if they had infirmities in their flesh. Signs and wonders were to validate the message, and the messenger as coming from God, as the kingdom of God was being preached as at hand. The Jews required a sign. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 22 For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. The shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. First we read above that it was by the hands of the apostles that people were healed. Then if one of them were just to walk by someone who was sick or vexed with an unclean spirit, they would be healed. That is what it meant to be filled with the Holy Spirit in those days. 
They were healed every one. Jesus healed everyone that had an infirmity in their flesh. The apostles also healed everyone they came across because a priest could not have any infirmities, nor could they be possessed by a devil. While the kingdom was still at hand, God was preparing Israel to become a kingdom of priests. Exodus 19 verses 5 to 6 Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. 1 Peter 2 verse 9 But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Acts 5 verses 17 to 20 Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles, and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors, and brought them forth, and said, Go, stand, and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. The angel of the Lord, an angel and messenger. Acts 5 verses 21 to 33, And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning, and taught. But the high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together, and all the senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came, and found them not in the prison, they returned, and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut with all safety, and the keeper standing without before the doors, but when we had opened, we found no man within. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple, and teaching the people. Then went the captain with the officers, and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And, behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree, a cross is made from a tree. Both Paul and Luke use the word cross as well as the word tree at other times. They use them interchangeably. Luke 9 verse 23 KJV, And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross daily, and follow me. Luke 14 verse 27 KJV, And whosoever doth not bear his cross, and come after me, cannot be my disciple. Luke 23 verse 26 KJV, And as they led him away, they laid hold upon one Simon, a Cyrenian, coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross, that he might bear it after Jesus. Acts 10 verse 39 KJV, And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Luke 23 verse 39, And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. Deuteronomy 21 verses 22 to 23 below. Galatians 3 verse 13, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. Deuteronomy 21 verses 22 to 23, And if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, and he be to be put to death, and thou hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. For he that is hanged is accursed of God winky face that thy land be not defiled, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins, 
Peter did not mention the Gentiles because he was unaware that God would soon raise up the Apostle Paul and Usher in the dispensation of grace. The Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him, God did not give power to be used for selfish reasons or to a person who was not involved in doing God's will reaching people with the gospel of the kingdom. You cannot do what Peter did on this day because God is not doing that today. You are baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ, and you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Ephesians 4 verse 30 The kingdom saints were all baptized with the Holy Ghost, not by Him, and they had to be filled again and again. Acts 5 verse 34 Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee, named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people, and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space. A doctor of the law, someone with advanced education in the Bible, and in the teachings of the elders, the traditions. Acts 5 verses 35 to 42 And said unto them, Ye men of Israel, Take ye to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Theudas, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about four hundred, joined themselves, who was slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered, and brought to naught. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing and drew away much people after him, he also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, and let them alone, for if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught, but if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. And to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Daily in the temple, the apostles were teaching there and in every house, because God's kingdom program had not ceased yet, but things were about to change soon after Stephen comes on the scene. Chapter 6 The Widows Neglected Acts 6 verses 1 to 2 And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them, and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. The Grecians, these were Greek-speaking Jews, who were believers in Jesus, who were living in Jerusalem at that time. The twelve, Luke verifies that Matthias is one of the twelve apostles. Some traditions refute this to their shame. Paul was not saved yet, and he would be the apostle of the Gentiles. Romans 11 verse 13 Israel was to have twelve apostles to sit on twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Matthew 19 verses 27 to 28 Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all, and followed thee, what shall we have, therefore? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me, in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. This kingdom church was practicing kingdom living with everyone giving to the apostles, and they then distributed to the widows as they had need. Acts 6 verses 3 to 7 Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. The apostles were told to reach Jerusalem first, and many priests in Israel were saved and became obedient to the faith. This meant that they would lose their jobs in the temple as part of the persecution that would soon follow. Full of the Holy Ghost, 
Stephen was a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. Stephen was saved under the preaching of the kingdom, not by hearing the gospel given unto the apostle Paul. Romans 2 verse 16 In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Romans 16 verse 25 Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 17 For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward, but if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. 1 Timothy 1 verse 11 According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. 2 Timothy 2 verse 8 Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. These seven Greek-speaking men are often called deacons by many, but that office is not mentioned until God does it with the body of Christ years later under Paul's ministry to the Gentiles. Deacons are mentioned first in Philippians 1 verse 1 and twice in 1 Timothy 3 verse 8 and 12. The Greek word appears 30 times, and it means a servant or a minister. The requirement for these men were different than those mentioned by Paul. Acts 6 verses 8 to 10 and Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, and Cyrenians, and Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Them of Cilicia, Tarsus was a city in Cilicia, and Saul was from Tarsus, and was probably one of those who disputed with Stephen. Acts 6 verses 11 to 14 Then they suborned men, which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses, which said, This man saith saith not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law, for we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. They suborned men, they paid them off to witness in their favor. Jesus did not destroy the temple, Rome did in 70 AD. Then it says they set up false witnesses when he appeared before the council. Matthew 24 verses 1 to 2. Acts 6 verse 15 And all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Imagine them seeing Stephen's face as the face of an angel and then still going about to kill him. Zeal without knowledge is very dangerous. Chapter 7 Stephen's Prosecution Acts 7 verses 1 to 13 Then said the high priest, Are these things so? And he said, Men, Brethren and fathers, hearken, the God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he dwelt in Charan, and said unto him, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and come into the land which I shall shew thee. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans, and dwelt in Charan, and from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land, wherein ye now dwell. And he gave him none inheritance in it, no, not so much as to set his foot on, yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession, and to his seed after him, when as yet he had no child. And God spake on this wise, that his seed should sojourn in a strange land, and that they should bring them into bondage, and entreat them evil four hundred years. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, said God, and after that shall they come forth, and serve me in this place. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision, and so, Abraham begot Isaac, and circumcised him the eighth day, and Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot the twelve patriarchs. And the patriarchs, moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him, and delivered him out of all his afflictions, and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh king of Egypt, and he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Now there came a dearth over all the land of Egypt and Shinan, and great affliction, and our fathers found no sustenance. But when Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt, he sent out our fathers first. 
And at the second time Joseph was made known to his brethren, and Joseph's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh. The second time, Joseph's brothers did not recognize him the first time he appeared unto them in Egypt. He was recognized by them the second time, just as Israel will recognize their Messiah the second time that they see him when he returns at the end of the Great Tribulation period. Acts 7 verses 14 to 16 then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him and all his kindred, threescore and fifteen souls. So, Jacob went down into Egypt and died, he and our fathers, and were carried over into Sychem and laid in the sepulcher that Abraham bought for a sum of money of the sons of Emir, the father of Sychem. Threescore and fifteen souls, seventy-five people. Acts 7 verses 17 to 25, But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt, till another king arose, which knew not Joseph. The same dealt subtly with our kindred, and evil entreated our fathers, so that they cast out their young children, to the end they might not live. In which time Moses was born, and was exceeding fair, and nourished up in his father's house three months, and when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up, and nourished him for her own son. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and was mighty in words and in deeds. And when he was full forty years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him, and avenged him that was oppressed, and smote the Egyptian, for he supposed his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them, but they understood not. Exceeding fair, a proper child. Hebrews 11 verse 23 KJV By faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents, because they saw he was a proper child, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. He supposed his brethren would have understood, Stephen is setting his audience up to the possibility that they missed Christ at his first appearing. Their ancestors also did not understand what Moses was trying to do the first time. Acts 7 verses 26 to 37 And the next day he shewed himself unto them as they strove, and would have set them at one again, saying, Sirs, ye are brethren, why do ye wrong one to another? But he that did his neighbor wrong thrust him away, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge over us? Wilt thou kill me, as thou didst the Egyptian yesterday? Then fled Moses at this saying, and was a stranger in the land of Madian, where he begot two sons. And when forty years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sina an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. When Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight, and as he drew near to behold it, the voice of the Lord came unto him, saying, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled, and durst not behold. Then said the Lord to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groaning, and am come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send thee into Egypt. This Moses whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out, after that he had shewed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt, and in the Red Sea, and in the wilderness forty years. This is that Moses, which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear. Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear. Deuteronomy 18 verses 15 to 18. The voice of the Lord, Jesus is the word of God. John 1 verse 1. Acts 7 verse 38 This is he, that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sina, and with our fathers, who received the lively oracles to give unto us. The church in the wilderness, a church is a called out assembly. Israel was called out of Egypt, a type of the world, to assemble together in the wilderness so they might serve God. The lively oracles, the law given to Israel at Mount Sina. Romans 3 verses 1 to 2 What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, 
chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Acts 7 verses 39 to 45, to whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust him from them, and in their hearts turned back again into Egypt, saying unto Aaron, Make us gods to go before us, for as for this Moses, which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. And they made a calf in those days, and offered sacrifice unto the idol, and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. Then God turned, and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of forty years in the wilderness? Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch, and the star of your god Remphan, figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles, whom God drave out before the face of our fathers, unto the days of David. Brought in with Jesus, there has been some confusion here as to how Jesus' name is in the place of what should be Joshua. There is no problem here because it is the same name. Jesus is how you would translate the name Joshua if it were coming from the Greek, otherwise we would just use Joshua if it were a direct translation from Hebrew into English. The Possession of the Gentiles, the Land of Canaan Acts 7 verses 46 to 50 who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him an house. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet, Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool, what house will ye build me? Saith the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? Isaiah 66 verses 1-2 to Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool, where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord, but to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. The Prosecution of Israel's Leaders Acts 7 verses 51 to 53 Stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which shoot before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels, and have not kept it. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, this meant that Stephen's hearers were not in a right standing with God, and that they would all perish in hell. Israel had rejected God the Father in the Old Testament and persecuted his prophets. They rejected John the Baptist whom he had sent, and then they rejected his son, and here they had resisted the Holy Ghost in verse 51. Luke 12 verse 10, And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him, but unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost it shall not be forgiven. The disposition of angels, the act of transferring something to someone else. Acts 7 verses 54 to 56 When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven, and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing on the right hand of God, and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. They were cut to the heart, stabbed in the heart, figuratively speaking. Acts 2 verse 37 and 523. He being full of the Holy Ghost, Israel's leaders rejected Stephen's testimony. Once Christ ascended into heaven, he sat down at his Father's right hand where he waits until the day in which his Father will send him back to judge Israel. I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God, when God's right hand man stands up, something is about to happen. Psalms 110 verse 1 A Psalm of David The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. In scripture we read about God standing up to plead for Israel. Here, however, he is standing up ready to judge. 
Isaiah 3 verse 13, the Lord standeth up to plead and standeth to judge the people. It was now time for Israel to go through the time of Jacob's trouble, but God had a secret he had been keeping since before the world began according to Romans 16 verse 25. This secret would interrupt Israel's prophecy program with the body of Christ to usher in the dispensation of grace that had been kept secret since the world began. A mystery program. Romans 16 verses 25 to 26 Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest. Acts 7 verses 57 to 60 Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him and the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul and they stoned Stephen calling upon God and saying Lord Jesus receive my spirit and he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice Lord lay not the sin to their charge and when he had said this, he fell asleep. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. Saul, the chief of sinners, led the rebellion against by persecuting the apostles and the little flock of kingdom saints before he got saved and became the apostle of the Gentiles. Romans 11 verse 13 Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. Under the law Saul had blasphemed the Holy Spirit which was the unpardonable sin, and he could not have forgiveness under the law, but under grace he could. Israel's additional year ends. Jesus had given Israel an additional year to repent and to produce the fruits of righteousness as he foretold the parable of the fig tree before he went to the cross. Luke 13 verses 6 to 9. This parable has confused many who take it out of its context and try to spiritualize it. It says what it means and means what it says to Israel. Luke 13 verses 6 to 9 He spake also this parable, A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none, cut it down, why cumbereth it the ground? And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it, and dung it, and if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. It helps when trying to understand this parable that you keep it in the context of its preceding five verses where Jesus is telling Israel that they all need to repent, or they shall all likewise perish. A certain man, God, a fig tree, Israel, his vineyard, Israel, fruit, the judgment and righteousness that was supposed to be produced by the fig tree, Israel. These three years, the three years Christ was with them, they did not produce the required fruits of righteousness. This year also, the additional year ended spoken about in the parable of the fig tree and Israel was cut down after at this time just before Saul of Tarsus gets saved. Instead of bearing fruit because of the words they heard preached for that additional year by the apostles with signs and wonders, they killed Stephen full of the Holy Ghost at the end of the additional year granted to them after the 69th week of Daniel. The only thing left on Israel's prophetical time clock now was for the 70th week of Daniel to begin, but God interrupted Israel's prophetic program to usher in the dispensation of grace, but not before saving its future leader, Saul of Tarsus. Chapter 8. They were all scattered abroad. Acts 8 verse 1 And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. The church which was at Jerusalem, Saul now becomes the leader of the persecution against the Messianic church at Jerusalem thinking that he was doing God's work. This earned him the title of the chief of sinners in 1 Timothy 1 verse 15. The word chief literally means the one who leads others in a cause or the head of. They were all scattered abroad, except the apostles. The apostles remained in Jerusalem when their flock was scattered because Jerusalem must believe in their Messiah before the kingdom could come to Israel. 
The church in Jerusalem was not scattered by God as a part of the scattering that was promised for unbelieving and disobedient Israel in Leviticus 26. This was a scattering forced on believing Israel by unbelieving Israelites. Acts 8 verses 2 to 4 and devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, and hailing men and women committed them to prison. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. They that were scattered, this is the last we hear of Saul, who later becomes known as Paul, until we read about his conversion on the road to Damascus in Acts 9. The twelve apostles remained in Jerusalem waiting for God's leading. Acts 11 verse 19 Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phenice and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. Acts 8 verses 5 to 8 Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and that were lame, were healed. And there was great joy in that city. Philip, one of the seven Grecians that were chosen to help the poor widows in the church at Jerusalem that was full of the Holy Ghost. Acts 6 verses 1 to 7. The city of Samaria, Samaria received the good news about Christ because the little flock was scattered to that area by the persecution that had arisen. The Samaritans were Jews that had intermingled with Gentiles. They were descendants of those that were left behind during the Assyrian captivity. They were of the northern ten tribes which made Samaria their capital and Mount Gerizim their place of worship. Remember the woman at the well in John 4? They had intermingled with the Gentiles that were there, and they practiced an even more diluted brand of Judaism than that which was practiced in Jerusalem, using only the five books of Moses. While Judah and Benjamin, known as the house of Judah, did not recognize Samaritans as Jews, they were still Jews. The Samaritans would be submitting to Judah and Jerusalem's authority over them in order for them to receive the Holy Spirit when Peter and John went to them from the church in Jerusalem to lay hands on them. Remember that Jesus had once forbidden his twelve apostles from going into any city of the Samaritans in Matthew 10 verse 5, and now something major has changed. Acts 8 verses 9 to 12, but there was a certain man, called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery, and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God, and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God, he did not preach about the dispensation of grace. Entrance into the kingdom of God was through repentance and baptism in the name of Jesus. There was a little flock that was made up completely of Jewish believers back in Jerusalem that had now been scattered abroad, but no Gentiles were a part of this kingdom church. Acts 8 verse 13 Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Then Simon himself believed also, Simon believed the gospel of the kingdom, not the gospel of the grace of God that was delivered unto the apostle Paul. Paul was not even saved yet. Acts 8 verses 14 to 17 Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Ghost, for as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. That they might receive the Holy Ghost, for as of yet he was fallen upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Prior to Matthew 28 verses 19 to 20, Jesus' disciples were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. After his resurrection, Jesus commanded his apostles to now baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost.
then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. We do not have people lay hands on us today in the body of Christ to receive the Holy Ghost as Israel had to. The baptism with the Holy Ghost was promised to Israel by Joel, John the Baptist, and Jesus. Joel 2 verses 28 to 29 and Matthew 3 verse 11. We today are baptized by the Holy Spirit, placing us into the body of Christ the moment we believe. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13. These Samaritans had to have the apostles come from Jerusalem to lay hands on them before they could receive the Holy Ghost, thus bringing them back under the authority of what God was doing at that time. Remember what Jesus said to the Samaritan woman? Salvation is of the Jews. John 4 verse 22. Nothing before Acts chapter 9 is our pattern today, because they were all still operating under the message of the kingdom. Acts 8 verses 18 to 24, And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness, and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon, and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. The Holy Ghost was given, Philip could cast out evil spirits and heal people in Samaria, but he was not an apostle, so Peter and John had to travel to Samaria to lay hands on them to receive the Holy Ghost. Thy money perish with thee, remember that Simon believed under the kingdom message, not under the gospel of the grace of God that we are saved by today. Acts 8 verse 25 And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. The gospel, Philip preached the same gospel that the twelve had been preaching up to that time. The gospel of the circumcision, which was the same thing basically as the gospel of the kingdom. Matthew 4 verses 17 to 23. Galatians 2 verses 7 to 8, but contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. Acts 8 verses 26 to 28, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning, and sitting in his chariot read Isaiah the prophet. The angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, He does not speak to you, your pastor, or anyone else today in the dispensation of grace. He spoke to certain in Israel, and every time it had to do with Israel's kingdom promises. Here we have a circumcised convert to Judaism coming from Jerusalem where he had been worshipping. He cannot be classified as a Gentile because of his circumcision and his conversion to Judaism, he would be called a proselyte. It is not until chapter 10 that we see the first true Gentile believe that message, which is Cornelius. Acts 8 verses 29 to 35 Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near, and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him, and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth, in his humiliation his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip, and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself? or of some other man. Then Philip opened his mouth, and began at the same scripture, and preached unto him Jesus. 
Isaiah 53 is a prophetic indictment against Israel for rejecting their Messiah in the future. Philip tells this convert to Judaism all Jesus did during his earthly ministry, and he tells him of the gospel that Jesus and his disciples preached to Israel with its baptism of repentance for the remission of sin, and he believed it. Acts 8 verses 36 to 37 And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water, what doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, verse 37 is intentionally taken out of most Bible versions. The eunuch had to believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God in order to be baptized into that kingdom program. We today have to believe the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus in order to be saved. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4, Acts 8 verses 38 to 40, And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through he preached in all the cities, till he came to Caesarea. Why did Philip baptize the eunuch? So that he could receive the remission of sins. Acts 2 verse 38 The Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. God is not doing any of the stuff he was doing concerning Israel because the focus is not Israel today, it is on the church, which is Christ's body. While Satan was focusing his attention on the persecution of believers in Jerusalem, multitudes of Samaritans were being saved. That persecution was being headed up by the Pharisee of Pharisees, who was persecuting this messianic church into many strange cities. God would now take Satan in his own craftiness and save the leader of the rebellion against God. Israel became Lomi, not God's people Hosea 1 verse 9, when Israel's leaders rejected the final offers of the kingdom in Acts chapters 3 to 7, which was one year after Jesus gave the parable of the fig tree in Luke 13 verses 6 to 9. Stephen was killed 483 years after the commandment to rebuild and restore Jerusalem given in 450 BC at the end of the 69th week of Daniel. Daniel 9 verses 24 to 27. The next thing on Israel's prophetic time clock was the time of Jacob's trouble, but that terrible time of God's wrath would not happen then, as it would be preceded by the unprophesied dispensation of grace. Jeremiah 30 verse 7 Alas! For that day is great, so that none is like it, it is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Daniel's 70 weeks. The 70th week of Daniel would now be put on hold as Israel had stumbled and fell, and they will remain lomi, not my people, until the rapture happens and the body of Christ is taken to be with the Lord. Daniel 9 verses 24 to 27. Then the 70th week of Daniel will begin, and Israel will be suffering the worst week, seven-year period, that she will ever experience in all of her existence. Daniel 9 verse 24 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Daniel's 70 weeks are not 70 literal weeks. They are 70 sevens. One week equals seven years. Genesis 29 verses 27 to 28 fulfill her week, and we will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. And Jacob did so and fulfilled her week, and he gave him Rachel his daughter to wife also. Jacob served Laban for one week of seven years to get Rachel as his bride. Israel was to be punished by God for 490 years, or 70 weeks of years each. 70 weeks equals 490 years. 7 times 7 is equal to 49 years plus 62 times 7 is equal to 434 years plus 7 times 1 is equal to 7 years. From the commandment until Messiah, 69 weeks, 483 years 7 years. 
70th week. Daniel 9 verses 25 to 27 Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks, the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. A note to the reader. In section I of the Dispensational Study Bible the Kingdom of Heaven was preached as at hand in the four Gospels. Matthew 3 verses 1 to 2, 4 colon 17 dash 23, 10 colon 7, Mark 1 verse 15 and Luke 21 verse 31. A Jew needed to believe that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God if they wanted to enter the kingdom. John 8 verse 24. Israel's chief priests said they had no king but Caesar, so the kingdom was taken from them and given to the little flock of Jewish believers who would bring forth the fruits of it. John 19 verse 15, Matthew 21 verse 43, and Luke 12 verse 32. That kingdom was offered to Israel in Acts 3 verses 19 to 21, but it was rejected by Israel's leaders, and they later killed Stephen. The End 